Ever since I received my early review code for Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2, this co-op shooter has been the only game I've wanted to play, even staying it in an early preview to be one of the best co-op shooters I've played this decade. So with the game's imminent release on the way, ahoy folks, I'm Craigo of Pure Xbox bringing you PJ O'Reilly's review of Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 for the Xbox Series X and S consoles. Right then, let's dive in for the Imperium. My pledge is eternal service. You know those big action movies where two big beefy bruisers lock eyes across a massive battle, just unceremoniously shoving aside lesser foes as they charge towards each other for a big epic beatdown? Well, Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 gives you that. It lets you do that a lot. It gives you all the chaos of classic Warhammer 40k scenes from the books, comics and board games over the years, the ones with hulking heroes facing impossible alien odds. It throws you into the thick of battle, knee deep in blood and guts, fighting alongside your stoic space brothers as you hack, slash and shoot through a sea of tyrannid filth. Changing magazine. This is Gears of War on crack, with its signature roadie run intact. An Epic Games' sci-fi epic is an obvious touchstone in several important ways. Sure, charging into the screen with the camera shake might be overused these days, but it still draws you into the action. These space marines, much like those found in the original Xbox game, move with the same heavy, purposeful stride as Marcus and Delta One. There's a power and purpose to everything they do, and everything they do is murder, while saying stuff that makes them seem very hard and very gay for each other, and it's just really good stuff. Ravener eliminated. There's no sticky cover system to worry about though. Thankfully, space marines don't cower in fear, and so it's stripped away in favor of large open levels with nowhere to hide. The various areas you'll work through in both campaign and operation modes are huge, actually largely empty but for exploding barrels, and that's for a very good reason. The Swarm tech needs room to breathe, baby. And yes, the Swarm. We've heard a lot of talk about the Tyranid Swarm over the years, and it's crucial to this game and to the core of the fantastic action at hand that Swarm actually means Swarm this time. Using crack now, we've already been treated to Saber Interactive's impressive swarm tech through our time with the excellent World War Z. And if you've played that, you'll know the fear and panic that even a moderately large number of brain dead zombies can generate when they're headed your way. Now, replace the brain dead shamblers with a rather clever bunch of alien bastards and then turn the numbers way up. We're talking hundreds, if not thousands, of the blighters and then just let us rip and tear them all to pieces. Disgusting Tyranid scum. It's in the moments before the Tyranid swarm arrives here, as you see this seething mass peeling down some futuristic hill in the distance, when you realize the entire scene in front of you is alive and moving in your direction. That Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 really gets your attention. Forget about everything, prepare your weapons, and get ready to do what Space Marines do best. Then, when it arrives, when the spaceship finally hits the fan, you're treated to a combat system that gets everything right. It gives you enough control, it gives you enough style and options, and it melds perfectly with epic scenes of carnage to provide the ultimate Warhammer 40k power fantasy in shooter melee form. Ah, oh, so good. Over the course of a thrilling six chapter campaign that acts almost as a training ground, as a precursor to the meteor action of operations, we get all the overly pompous barking, ridiculously hammer-headed dialogue which is written and delivered with a ton of wit and charm, and lore that fans could possibly want. We get a bunch of the best looking campaign settings we've ever seen. Again, it's all very reminiscent of Gears of War in how the game's visuals sort of shocked us awake when we first booted that up on Xbox. There's some jaw dropping vistas, great big space wars in full on chaos mode. The roadie run through here and once you meet your enemy, the fantastic gameplay and clever mechanics are revealed in full. 
There is as much melee combat here as there is shooting. Your health bar is replenished by doing damage to foes within a set window after taking a hit, and everything is set to encourage to push you forward, to be that space marine in the posters. You know, the one with hundreds of enemies climbing up their body as they hold aloft some bigger foe in order to put a pistol against his head and pull the damn trigger. That legend. The swarm is deadly if you let it get on top of you, so you always need to be employing a series of simple melee combos to keep them at bay, flinging grenades to clear a space, or finishing off a sequence of sword swipes with a big meaty area of effect attack. Clubbing lesser tyranids to death is excellent fun. It feels heavy and bloody and responsive. The shooting is impressive too. Again, very Gears of War in how it controls, and a wide variety of enemy types ensure that you'll need shotguns, flamethrowers, precision sniper rifles, and all that jazz to deal with every encounter you face. It genuinely feels like it's been a while since we've had to consider anything like that in a shooter, so it's nice to have it back. A little intelligence to how everything is placed in order to have you use all the weapons and tools at your disposal. So the bones are familiar. There's nothing in the shooting or melee at this level that's particularly unique. It just feels really good. But then the devs get clever, adding a bunch of slick contextual stuff. Hold in attack to daze a foe at the end of a combo, for example, and you'll bring up a red aiming reticule that lets you target a shot right into some alien's daft mug. There's a ton of finishes to pull off, snapping necks and ripping big rotten space baddies in half above your head. All of this stuff is so well woven into the core mechanics that even as it wrestles control away from you to do something awesome, it still feels as though you are totally in command. Even the temporary invulnerability that these finishes and things incur is worked into the action perfectly. It gives you a chance to recharge, gives you a little space to swing the camera around and gauge your options. You'll find yourself pulling off executions on larger foes just to give you a little mental tea break from barring all the little guys. It is quite simple. Magazine. Now then, we won't ruin any of the fun of the story mode's narrative here. It's a big daft thing with tons of huge set pieces and skyboxes full of laser fire to run amok in. It also mixes things up in some fun sequences. Stuff like having you protect a space brother with your sniper rifle, facing off against a swarm in the dark, or using flamethrowers to clear space as you work to switch some power button on or off, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's all designed for co-op with pals, so the objectives were never going to be that deep, but they get the job done, and most importantly, they don't get in the way of the brutal action. And boy oh boy is it brutal. Even on normal difficulty, this one can get hairy. We turn the difficulty up to max, and you and any of your buddies along for the ride are in for a proper fight. Each chapter is topped off by a big boss battle too. There's some surprisingly clever and tough stuff to face off against, and we can already see ourselves blasting through it on every difficulty to earn every badge and find every collectible data slate or talisman, trinkets used to get one more chance upon death, extra shields, and so on. Found something useful. So the six chapter campaign is excellent. We haven't played any of the PVP modes yet because the servers aren't working, which is a shame, but it's operations that we're actually most excited about, surprisingly. What we thought was going to be co-op aside to the campaign is actually the mode that you're likely to spend more time in. That's because it's where the game's class systems, upgrades, and unlockables come into play. I was wrong to expect a better fight from a sniveling backstabber. In Operations, you play through a series of scenarios that stem off the storyline from the main campaign. The first one, as an example, sees you play as a team of marines that are sent off to do a mission by a character in the main story mode. It makes everything feel much more cohesive as a result, and the action here is more enjoyable because you get a sense of progression in ranking up your chosen class, whether it be a sniper, vanguard, or a heavy, etc., and a far greater mix of weapons and core skills to play around with. Just as in story mode, where protagonist Titus has a special that charges up and allows him to go berserk mode for a short period, here each class has a unique power to use as it becomes available. We've been playing mostly as a vanguard who has this grapple hook that pulls him over to enemies in an instant, but there's also camo cloaks and jump packs in the mix here too. And yeah, jump packs, they're awesome. Skill trees, which we kind of hate at this stage, are here. Of course they are, but they feel pleasingly unfussy and straightforward. This isn't a game designed for sitting in the menus and counting numbers. Clear. 
Oh, and the customization. This is going to keep a lot of people playing for the long haul. And we're sure it opens up even more in the online mode. But unlocking super cool armor, suits, new character faces and styles, and a ton of other bits and bobs, all by simply playing the game and beating challenges, is rewarding and moorish. And we cannot wait to hoover up every bit of DLC, every new armor pack, and unlockable facial scar that they hit us with. We are fully in the zone with Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. You don't need to know anything about the tabletop board games, or painting Wii mini figurines, or spilling paint all over your kitchen or anything like that to get involved. This is a spectacular cooperative action game, simple as that. A great big chunky love letter to Warhammer, and one of the best things we've played this year, thanks to how pure and focused it is every step of the way. You want big space marines soaring aliens scum in half whilst proclaiming their undying love for each other? Oh, step this way, my friend. Finally, and in terms of performance, on Series X, things are looking good for launch in both quality and performance modes. We'll let the likes of Digital Foundry give you the exact results on everything, but in performance mode, everything looks and plays well enough that we left it there for the most part. <laughs> switch to quality mode definitely sees fancier reflections on the ground and it felt smooth enough but we'd rather the highest possible frame rate with this sort of non-stop action and it seems to run well enough on the xbox series s too with regards to bugs beyond the tyranids themselves we had very little issue a little pop in here and there is about the height of our problems which is impressive given just how fantastic this one looks and sounds at every turn Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 is a spectacular achievement that gives Warhammer fans everything that they could possibly have wanted when it comes to role-playing their favorite chunky space boys. Saber's swarm tank is deployed to dazzling effect, and with purpose and context too. This is the Tyranid Swarm of your nightmares, and you've been given all the slick melee moves, gnarly finishes, and great big shooty guns that you'll need to stave it off. Think about Gears of War with hundreds of enemies on screen at once, with the cumbersome cover system removed and the speed dialed up and you're in the right place. And what a place to be, whether solo or with pals online, this is one of the best action games that we've played in a long while. All specs ready to scan. Well then, that's everything from PJ, and I'm so glad he feels similarly to me about Space Marine 2. This is the sort of game that once the action kicks into gear, you'll find yourself making really loud and confusing noises Hulk Hogan would be proud of, simply because it's just so cool to play. Anywho, I'd like to know what Astartes chapter that you'll be running in Operation Mode, Vigo Black Legion, Raven Guard, Omega Marines, just whatever, let me know in the comments below. All this left to say is bye-bye for now. Cheerio, brother!